Değerli konuklarımız hoş geldiniz. Welcome distinguished guests. And I would like to thank you for your attendance because after the theatrical presentation Mr. Dixon is in the morning in the other adjacent room and I'm worried because uh, you know uh, I don't know if people will think there's jazz but it was Mr. Giles not jazz and we've got distinguished speakers and the century of wind slogan in this session in the industry part of wind energy is very important for us, particularly as the Turkish Wind Energy Association, because the development of the wind energy in Turkey is a success story. And it is not that long, and there are 25,000 people employed and 1.5 billion euros of uh, exports potential. And it's a, a story that we will be proud of in the wind energy, but we listened to it yesterday and this morning. But particularly about Europe, there is a very important window that has been opened. It's our most important. <clears throat> And we are going to talk about um, there's Green Deal that is very important for us because we increase our intellectual capital with Green Deal. Both the, this concerns both the wind industry and all other industries. So we're going to blend these two topics in this session. I would like to start with Mr. Rio. <coughs> with you, sir. He is the general manager of CS Wind in charge of Turkey. And I would like to request him to introduce himself and talk about CS Wind's Turkish study. He's addressing you in English. About CS Wind's story in Turkey. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for your attending. Uh, I'm happy to introduce about CS Wind uh, Turkey. Uh, we uh, entered the uh, Turkey market in 2018. Uh, at that time, we uh, merged the Ege Tower company. Uh, could yep. you show the next page? It's on a slide on. This one? Green button. So, as you see, the, we located in Izmir, and also uh, in 2018, uh, we uh, merged the Ege Tower, and uh, uh, our main market was at that time uh, domestic, uh, domestic Turkey, and then uh, right now, uh, we, our main market is European and also USA, and also uh, Northern Africa. So we are mainly right now produce onshore wind tower. Thank you, Mr. Ryu. Tabi CS Wind, Türkiye'nin önemli CS Wind is an important tower manufacturer in Turkey. And when we talk about wind energy, we always think of tower, blade, and generator, but it's not limited to this, and we're going to expand our scope. But when we're talking about blade and tower, the first name that comes to mind is Mr. Alper Kalaycı. He's the general manager of Enerco Aerowind, and uh, he is an NCO uh, president. So it's a huge and important window that he's looking at. Mr. Alper, let's get to know you and the Turkish story of Aero Wind in Turkey. Thank you, Mr. Gökhan, for your kind uh, introduction. I'm a mechanical engineer, and I am actively present in the industry since 98. And in the, I worked on the assembly of the first window, uh, wind turbines, uh, and since uh, the mid-2000s, I work at Enarcon. 
before the renewable energy law, before EMRA, we were producing wind blades. Uh, and uh, Mr. Bobbin had a big foresight and insight, the founders, because we didn't have measurements properly. We just have a few field measurements. And uh, he was thinking that Turkey could be a production hub, and he invested. And uh, our first blades were uh, manufactured in 2001. We exported them from Turkey in 2002. And we are working on blade production since for 20 years. Between 2008 and 2018, we also manufactured concrete towers, but they were hybrid. Seven, uh, two thirds was concrete and one third was uh, steel. We manufactured 162 towers. I am also the chairman of NCR the biggest clean energy cluster in Turkey. Wind and since the days wind and solar were zero megawatts, I see these crowds, I see these events, these activities, and it makes me happy. Thank you, Mr. Alper. Indeed, you have a huge share in seeing these days, both with your Enercon and NCA wing hat, we are proud of you, and this is a very exciting, we experienced this in the morning because Giles uh, included, defined Europe and included Turkey in that definition, which made us happy. Tower and blade is what we think of because there are four to five gigawatts of capacity. 70 to 80 percent of it is exported, but it's not limited to that. You know, the wind equipments, we think of generators, connecting components, but on the electric side also, transformers, cells, uh, there is an important production capability. And uh, today, Mr. Fatih, Fatih Ishik is with us. He is representing Astor Energy. Mr. Fatih, can you please introduce yourself and Astor Energy and uh, your story in Turkey? Thank you. I would like to thank all the attendees for their presence here. Of course, wind energy and, and other renewable energy resources are very important for countries. And as Astor Energy, I am in the company since 2011. We grew fast. So we are working on transformers and switching components. We have 1,900 employees. And capacity-wise, we have a leading, we are one of the leading institutions in Turkey and in Europe. And particularly, wherever there's electricity, wherever there is energy, both for green energy and other goals, uh, we want our products to be there. We want them to be manufacturable, doable, and we want them to be delivered as soon as possible, particularly because of political issues. There are problems experienced among the world states, and engineering and production has become much more important. And if you cannot produce transformers or you need to supply them from elsewhere. And even Europe uh, is obtaining these from companies and countries like us. And the top 10 export companies, nine are from Europe. And most demands are coming from wind and solar or industrial plants. And these plants, even though they are completed, they are waiting because of transformer needs or switching cell requirements. So in Astor, recently, this is a significant employment and export capacity, and it fills an important gap. And in the morning meetings, this was raised also. And in the previous meeting, particularly Europe, we saw that uh, the speaker mentioned that Europe, our speaker friend said, Europe doesn't have this capability. So Turkey has a very important potential, not only in transformers and switching components, but in all tasks, it is going to create a resource for uh, Europe. 
Thank you, Mr. Pate. We listening to the story in depth. We see how much the technology develops and the different components of a turbine and the transformer, electronic side and cables. There are it has such an import Turkey has such an important power in Turkey that this is a big advantage for us. Such as uh, industry, there is there are hidden powers there. And even though they don't look in the forefront, this has a very important share uh, in actualizing this. There are regionally clustered development agencies under the ministry, and our general manager, Mr. Ahmed Shimshek, is with us. And you, if you talk to us about development agencies and if you talk about yourself, yes, thank you very much. And I would like to greet all the participants on my behalf and on behalf of the ministry. I'm the general manager of development agencies with the Ministry of Industry. There are 26 development agencies in Turkey, and I'm in charge of their coordination at a national level. When it comes to development, we can intervene in every area. But our main duty is regional development. And in Turkey, ah, we are the main policy makers in Turkey, from agriculture to tourism, from industry to technology. We operate in every area with the dynamics of the regions, with the potential of the uh, uh, regions. We operate in every area. And regional development. Uh, is a function of national development, uh, but or is a footprint or a projection of this. And, and uh, our geography offers agricultural, forestry, mining. These are geographical potentials. And wind energy is a geographical potential. And we are working on the maximum and best utilization of these regional uh, resources. So we're trying to maximize what the geography gives us. On the other hand, there are uh, companies that operate in our region. And from time to time, companies choose locations. And companies are clustered in certain areas or concentrated. And there are sectoral capabilities, which also we intend to maximize. And we did do this. You can see this as a regional development activity. So when it comes to regional potentials or sectoral capabilities, we want to maximize them, sometimes in the form of project financing. And sometimes we want to give international funds to our cities. And sometimes bringing industries together by creating a synergy, by creating a dialogue. And this is how we carry out our activities. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Indeed, you cover all Turkey, every region, and everyone investing in Turkey, they know that development agencies provide a huge support, and they always stand by the investors. And we're grateful to you for that. And from an industrial standpoint, uh, Mr. Fatih Kajir, our ministry of, Minister of Industry, said, 500, there is a journey that will go from 250 gigawatts to 550 gigawatts in uh, Turkey, in, in Europe. And Turkey has a huge exports potential. And the development agencies will provide support for this. You know, there is a different topic, which is both related and uh, has a wider sp scope, uh, Green Deal. We have an expert among us. Ms. Burcu Mutman Boran is with us, and she's go, she is working on sustainability. And the issue of sustainability uh, is referred to as something very romantic at certain times. But you know, when we talk about border carbon tax and Green Deal, so we said, wait a second, is it going to affect our pockets? So our perceptions have changed. And we believe that these are important. Ms. Burjo, can you please talk about yourself and what you do? Thank you very much. My name is Burjo Mutman Boran. I'm the founding partner of C Consultancy Company. Since 2008, I'm working on climate change and sustainability. And just like Mr. Alper said, 
seeing the whole crowded and talking this to wider audiences is fun and great. So that's the same is applicable for me. You know, platforms where we can talk about sustainability was quite limited, and it was found something as romantic, like you said. But when we explained it, I'm thinking of our first years. Why uh, were we uh, pr prioritizing uh, fighting against the climate change? You know, there was this polar bear as a symbol, but it was way beyond polar bear, you know, with the development of the industry, the knowledge on sustainability increased, and we understood that all together. And this is a different philosophy, because we're talking about shifting, moving on to lower low carbon economy, a different economic model. And the European Union published the European Union new industry strategy. So the way we do, the way we work, uh, in the accustomed way has to change. We need to use new monitoring parameters, you know, carbon, polluting the nature, depleting natural resources. We're going to pay a price for this. So this has to be considered as a new balance for our OPEX. Yes, uh, sustainability requires sustainability. I still think there is the romantic bit in the background, but uh, there is a significant investment decision and a significant transformation decision that comes along with it. So I guess we will be talking about these more in the future. Uh, definitely. And our talk is not also in the business sense, but it is important as a world citizen as well. And f subsequently, I believe that as humanity, we will uh, pay more importance and attention to it. In fact, we talked about Europe, the European potential, and exports potential. And Mr. Rui uh, talked, to, uh, he is the Turkey's, uh, because Turkey is addressing the uh, European uh, market. So how do you see the potential in Europe? And what kind of a market is there in Europe for Turkey? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, at the beginning time, uh, <clears throat> CS Wind uh, just uh, targeted uh, domestic Turkey and also the near, near uh, countries as like uh, Greece and uh, Bulgaria and Ukraine. Uh, that was the, our uh, the main target of the market. Uh, but right now, we are expanding to European uh, from Norway to Sweden, uh, south is Spain and uh, France and also uh, all, all, all uh, European countries we are exporting. And also Northern Africa and also Middle East is our target. Uh, this is the uh, forecast of uh, European market for onshore and also offshore. The, as you see, uh, we expect to be a very challengeable by next year, Q1, Q2, and up to Q3 will be very challengeable time for uh, wind energy uh, in Turkey and also in European countries. Uh, but uh, option, for onshore, uh, will be uh, revitalized from end of 2024, Q4, and uh, from 2025 will be very uh, prosperous. So uh, we, we are uh, making strategy for uh, trend and also for offshore. Until 2024 uh, will be very challengeable. Everybody talk about offshore uh, will be very prosperous, but I don't think so. By next year, uh, will be very, very challengeable. And to be honest, uh, Turkish uh, offshore industry is not be ready. I was uh, a head of shares uh, in the UK, uh, and also I was head of shares uh, in the China. Uh, we are producing uh, substation, shares wind, we are uh, producing substation and a monopile, and also transition piece, and offshore tower, and onshore tower. In the wind tower business, we are world number one. Uh, so in our 
uh, specific. It's a very challengeable time uh, for next, by next year. And then uh, for offshore, uh, it will be a very, very uh, good, op you, can get, you can get good opportunity from 2026. So we are focusing on uh, the, based on this uh, demand and uh, our trend. So uh, I guess we have to prepare very hard time uh, in 2024, first half. It's before five o'clock. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rui. Uh, actually, Mr. Rui opened two windows for us, number one. Now, we are talking about a great picture for the future, but the wind industry is not going through easy times. As we all learn by experience, you know, we are going through a brief turbulent period. The first two quarters of next year won't be that easy, said Mr. Ru, but then there will be a huge demand increase expectation. And another window was opened on the offshore part because the previous session was about offshore, and he talked about the significant opportunities about offshore, and that CSV having such plans is important, and there are many similar examples. As a global company, it's meaningful that they chose Turkey as a production hub. And similarly, Mr. Alper, you see Turkey not only as Turkey, but as a production hub, both in blades and in generators, and in many other components of Enercon. There's a capacity in place. So can you talk about it from an Enercon window, and how you see and see how, what kind of what is the future like when you look at this export's potential? So the wind market is very variable. So one year you see that the assembly in Germany is great, but the next year in Germany assembly is bad and in Spain is high. And all of a sudden you see a new player, for example, and then you have India for a certain amount of time and went back. So for local production, you need, of course, a potential in the market. But there you need to establish a, as a homogeneous market. So we have, for example, established years of 1.7, 1.3. And this year, we expect to uh, finish the year with 350 megawatts of energy. And in the last 12 or 13 years, this is the worst year, the 100th year of the Turkish Republic. I'm talking about the domestic market. Of course, this doesn't have a direct effect on the on the companies, but the demand in uh, in the country is decreasing. So this would lead that the investors in Turkey doesn't want to invest. They want to leave maybe Turkey, and they're right. So we have to uh, the the markets should be not lower than 1,000 megawatts. And the, we need also new investors. And this would lead to receive new investors from abroad. In the industries, we sometimes feel a bottlenecks. Or, and these years of bad revenue comes four or five year from five, four or five years ago because five years ago we had some problems there were no projects for example and the reflection of this you see five years later so the first two quarters of 2024 will bet and then when the third quarter and fourth quarter it will be better and 2015 20, I'm sorry 2025 will be better so in the 25 years, we will have 20, 12 megawatts of established energy. So we want to raise this to 26.9 gigawatts. So we want to turn 12 gigawatts into 36. And we want to do it in a shorter time, in half the time. So 5 gigawatts is planned for offshore, and there and on offshore we have 0 gigawatts right now. So when we talked about the, in the recent years, when we talked about the offshore, we, we started talking about with the minister, uh, but we had no data. So uh, between two tricks, 
we had one year, 12 months, and we have a five gigawatts of a goal. So we know which year we should produce or generate how much. So we there is also four different areas for Yeka, which is renewable energy resource areas. So and we know where we should build these wind turbines or wind farms. And with the new Yeka, there was a tender. On the seaside, the variables are much more. Not not only. It's not enough that you have enough wind, but you have to also look for currents or waves or uh, the salt amount of the water. So we have also passed these steps, and this happened in the last 12 months, which is very positive. So with this, with this, I believe that we will have uh, 12 gigawatts additional power from uh, offshore in the next 12 months, uh, 12 years. So uh, especially the parts the, which lie beneath the sea level producing outside of Turkey and transported to Turkey is really difficult. So we have to produce, we have to manufacture these structures in Turkey because you cannot uh, ship it from outside, it doesn't make sense, and it has to be also close to the shore, because transporting these huge structures via a land it will not be possible. You cannot transport this on lorries. So I don't know what the plan will be, but I think the maritime industry will be in the forefront. So here we are in a very central position. So. I would like to add lastly the following. Last week, Greece has uh, declared its goals for offshore energy production. And they have 450 gigawatt capacity of projects. So this is huge. And our goal is 5 gigawatts. And Greece's goal is 450 gigawatts. So it means all of the Greek islands in the Aegean Sea are connected to each other, and they have almost the whole of the Aegean Sea. I hope they don't do such a big project, because these small islands, you cannot produce these components, uh, manufacture these components on these small islands. They're mostly rocks. So um, if they do build half of them there and half of them, half of the components will send to them. So this uh, shows another great potential for Turkey. Turkey. Thank you so much. I would like to add something to what you said. The International uh, Energy Agency's uh, pres president said Fatih Bey, and clean energy is energy of peace or peace energy. So maybe these plans of Greece to have offshore wind parks uh, on the islands and we are delivering components to them, this might lead to a peaceful energy So between two countries. This is a great potential for peace and for business. So Fatipe, how do you evaluate this, the future? What do you, where do you see the opportunities? Thank you. We as Astar Energy are producing or manufacturing transformators, transformators and key structures. So in the export, uh, we are expect the nine of 10 export countries are in Europe. So in investment in energy, especially in renewable energy, there is a huge appetite especially when it comes to the Green Deal. And companies are asking us about the Green Deal. And a couple of years ago, we, and this is a subject where we are, where we calculated the carbon footprint, and now we have a positive carbon footprint, or in that sense, a negative carbon footprint. So in the next 10, 15 years, we won't have any problems. This is our prognosis. And we are looking at the idea of maybe we should go totally into export. This is some of our plans. We don't want to shake the balance. So we are at a high capacity and want to increase it more. So the manufacturer, as a manufacturer, you don't want an uneven production. 
we want that the demand is sustainable. When we say sustainable, it doesn't only mean green energy. No, we want also sustainable demand, sustainable and electricity supply and consumption. Everything should be sustainable, so they are in an equilibrium or in a balance. Otherwise, you have breaking points or bottlenecks, and five years later, you have the problem. So we should look at the positive aspect and the negative aspect. And Turkey is in the manufacturing of electromechanical parts. This is our part. But also in other mechanical parts is Turkey in a very good, stable position. And in regards of the energy demand will be higher in the world. This another area of us is electrical charging stations for EVs. So we we are, our opinion is that these energy types should be clean and renewable. And in that sense, we don't see any risks for us because for our export. But one of the criteria here is the following. We are talking about industry where you have a huge amounts of investments and these are 10, 15, or 20 percent which belong to, to, Tur to Turkish manufacturers. And uh, we don't want these investments to be hindered, and we want them to get operational as fast as possible. And the sustainability of this investment belongs to us, so it's more foreseeable for us. So if you consolidate and control this sustainability for the inland demand or the demand, domestic demand, then you, are, you will be able to adapt to the changes abroad. But when you don't think about or starting with the ministries when it comes to the supply and demand and manufacturing and you don't plan it beforehand, then you have the instabilities and the, the whole industry is in, influenced by that. Our industry is very advantageous position. For the next 15, 20 years, we are expecting to have much better business. So this is our forecast for the future. So it's great that you can see what lies before you when it comes to export. and. You are think you, it's a problem for you to uh, whether to allocate your resources to the domestic uh, sales or to export. Well, this is a great uh, dilemma. Let me tell you that. So I also said that the development agencies have a huge, a very important contribution. But maybe we should uh, open this subject up because I'm, I'm aware of this situation, but maybe some of our guests don't know what a development agency does. So the regional potential and the industrial ed, uh, potential is, is the subject matter of development agencies. And we see in regions where the wind potential is high, we see that the companies are more interested here. We are talking about the shores of Ege, of the Aegean region. So Izmir, Çanakkale, Balıkesir. We had a lot of projects in these provinces of Turkey, Turkey. And the wind potential, especially in the last five years, has uh, increased dramatically. So this shows us that the only this industry, we have uh, financed 158 projects and 1, mil, 1 billion liras of financing has been done by our agency. This is sometimes support which has been sent directly to the companies, but sometimes this is also a support to all of the stakeholders of, in, of the industry. And then we make use also of international funds. So we received and distributed 10 million euros of international funds in this region for wind parks and uh, components of wind turbines. For the development of corporations and the investment in human resources and 
some innovative and testing centers for the for innovative products and services and training of people. So uh, development agencies, uh, one of the priorities of development agencies is also being a facilitator. And the idea is an end-to-end -end planning and strategic development of strategies and financial support. So we have a broad spectrum of services. So we want to open the, the industry and make an awareness. And we have a lot of strategies, roadmaps, and feasibilities. And these are some of the studies we did. And I want to uh, name them here very briefly. These studies have been done starting with Izmir, Çanakkale, and Balıkesir in the Aegeus region. For Izmir, we did an analysis for renewable energies and the roadmap for offshore wind parks. Çandarlı, Izmir organized industrial areas feasibility study. I'm sure you're aware that the needs of the industry is in regards of other industries, larger areas and bigger infrastructures. So in the Chandarla port, we had in the hinterland of Chandarla port, we are doing feasibility studies for energy, energy generation. So similarly, the logistic needs of a wind turbine or wind parks near Izmir we did a lot of feasibility studies to attract international investors. And one of them is a feasibility study for the recycling of blades and air warning lights for the towers to prevent collision of planes. And for Balakesir and Chanakkale, there is a project for building platforms for offshore floating systems. And this feasibility study was a facilitator for the, the definition of the four areas which have been defined by YECA. And we have different feasibility studies, like the ones I just named. And we want to give support companies and therefore we also need some in infrastructure and this one of these is the test analysis centers in cooperation with the high technology institute in izmir uh, our goal is to have experts or training experts here because there are tests and certificates we have to get from abroad. So we hope that we have in this center a new accreditation system so we are not dependent on uh, other countries. So the, and we are also giving, uh, and this, in, this center will also give uh, services to other industries like automotive or uh, defense. And uh, there, another project is the measurement of wind strength. So we built in Ali A, in close to Izmir, a tower for 40 meters high where we collect the wind data. And this is an open source data so that we are sharing with the whole industry. This is the main idea behind it. These are some of the uh, advancements we had support we have supported in the industry other things that are important for us is the development of human resources this is very this is close to our hearts in this sense we did three EU projects two of them were only focused on creating new human resources and training them and uh, just recently I found out that we opened up 150 new working working spaces for young people to be employed in the wind industry. So key WO certificates, we did trainings for that. The ECAT documents or certificates we have given to 
some trainees, and all of this means uh, is very important to raise new human resources for this industry. This is important for us, and clustering is another subject. And Best for Energy is a project we did in Izmir where we put all of the stakeholders in, turn in this industry together to have a discussion. Thank God that you did all of these works and all showed all of these efforts and helped the industry. Thank you so much. Ms. Purju, I want to talk to you now. We started with sustainability, but the, we, the Green Deal, carbon uh, trade, and all of these subjects are names, but uh, can you go a little bit into detail? I receive a lot of questions about this, and I want to go back and to see where we can, and then it's easier to guess what's coming next. And uh, there is the 3D concept, digital, low carbon, and the distributed energy systems, and this is a growing infrastructure that we're formulating. So when you look at 3Ds, yes, this is there are no plants with smoke coming from the pipe, uh, from the shaft, and energy is uh, received with long transmission lines. And when we talk about digitalization, we are in a huge transformation. But this is how it seems like the future is there for industry. And Financing supports this. So all investor institutions are making announcements in the direction of, you know, like what are our emission values, what is the fossil use, and a plastic-free plant is being expected, and the renewable uh, energy use is expected to increase. And as the financing is asked, the companies started making commitments. I'm going to be carbon neutral. I'm going to work on sustainability. And together with the commitments of the business world, the European Union as a continent says in 2050 they are going to be carbon neutral and they are going to reduce emissions by, uh, by 2055. So underneath these commitments, European Union new industry strategies can be found, which includes climate change, digitalization, circular economy, as well as sectoral strategies that it contains within itself. So when you look at the the main name is of this is Green Deal, which includes zero carbon steel, textiles, electronics, cyclical, circular economy, chemicals, etc. Many areas are a part of this. And Green Deal, one part of Green Deal has to do becoming is about becoming zero carbon. And uh, Border carbon tax is a sub-branch of this, and we are uh, dealing with a very small part of it, actually. So from an industry standpoint, it's a beneficial industry, wind energy, renewables, because it seems like a facilitator up until now. This is where it was. And when we first began, renewable energy projects, particularly wind and hydroelectricity plants, you know, they, we calculated how much they reduced the, like, the uh, carbons uh, compared to the traditional and conventional grid connections. And this is how it began with calculating the emission reductions. And the industry is also approaching, nearing, because the other industries are pledging to reduce their emissions. They draw a certain line, and they are pledging to make their manufacturing with a lower emission. Yes, it's a beneficial industry, but there is also another situation. The output and the use, it reduces emissions, but in the value chain and in the raw material and in the disposal parts, the carbon content might become critical because a border carbon tax tells, stipulates the following. Within EU, if the producers and generators are giving, are paying a carbon tax, we ha I have to protect the producers. Uh, uh, this is what the EU policies say. And there is no carbon tax. So this border tax, you, your industrialists must pay in the conditions that I pay. And uh, the 
competitive advantage. They are trying to build a relative competition. This is much more understandable, but we are talking about a huge transformation. And up until now, I can say for the wind energy, the components, they weren't questioning carbon because, as I said, in the beginning, they were reducing emissions. But when you look at the subcomponents, there are perhaps they cost carbon and they could. So that's why production process, raw material, uh, when you assess it, it can it contains such a risk as well. Thank you very much. And whenever we listen to it, it's a few parts of the puzzle sitting together, and you helped us a lot. And uh, to gain time, the time that we lost, we're going to continue for another round. Mr. Ryu, I want to go back to you. Uh, in 2025 and afterwards, you talked about a good market, the plans of CS went, and what can be done better? Uh, he proceeded to English. CS wins future plans in Turkey and what we need to do better to uh, explore this potential more. As you can see, uh, the beginning time, CS in the Turkey started in a very small area, uh, around 25,000 square meters. Right now, the right side, uh, you can see the uh, changes. It is around 350,000 square meters. In a new factory, uh, we expanded the uh, first factory, and also the, we invested in new second factory. In second factory, we can produce up to seven meter diameters. Uh, so uh, we could uh, plan to supply in European market of large diameter onshore tower and also uh, near shore, uh, near shore towers in uh, those factories. I strongly uh, believe uh, Turkey has really, really very a positive potential for uh, uh, wind tower market. And especially uh, onshore and also offshore also. So we have a plan to invest offshore tower and also a monofile, uh, monofile near uh, the port in Alia. So we are discussing with the Turkish government uh, to uh, purchasing around 350,000 square meters land, and uh, we are developing. And I hope to, so you can see the previous, my uh, the, the forecast, the, what I explained. Offshore business uh, will be very uh, prosperous uh, after 2026. So we need to prepare from now. Uh, I strongly uh, hope to make an uh, industry uh, with the Aegean uh, Association and uh, all other uh, the participants and also government side. We need to prepare uh, for next plan. So CS Wind uh, has a, a high uh, intention to invest more and more in Turkey. And right now, uh, we, are, we are producing only onshore tower, but we have a plan to offshore tower and a monofile. Uh, and so uh, we can make a synergy impact uh, between a Portuguese, Portugal uh, offshore tower um, factory and also uh, we merge the blood in Denmark so we can uh, cooperate with the uh, blood uh, in Denmark for a monopile, TP, and also uh, up to uh, substations. So uh, another plan, we have, uh, we need to discuss with the inter Minister of Industry uh, for opening a training center uh, for offshore uh, business. Uh, thank you. Çok teşekkürler. Aslında... Thank you very much.
We talked about the turbulent times for the sector, but Mr. Ryu said if there's a potential, this is the time to get prepared, so we shouldn't be late. Uh, and this is very valuable. And uh, it is, this is very meaningful to hear it from the representative of a country. Mr. Alper, you gave certain tips and clues and to assess this potential. What should we do to assess it more or to make best use of this? This is the uh, this is the subject of a separate topic, and I will continue from where Mr. Ahmed left. He talked about Best Renan project in Izmir Iska Izmir Development Agency. He was doing it, and we it was a three-year project, and. Uh, uh, this is going to be tried to increase their capacity. We did great things. I'm sure Mr. Ahmed has followed it. And similar projects, it's not always big uh, investors, big holdings. But you know, there are SMEs and there are smaller companies. So if we want to do anything for the future, we need to touch upon the small companies. We need to provide support. We need to increase their capacity. So rather than support for big companies, this part is very important. And the development agencies did great projects. And we see the results in a very fast way, such contributions. So, uh, I want the continuation of such projects. In Turkey, we were at 0 0.0 25 years ago, but right now there's 24 gigawatts of solar plus wind. It's 54.8% clean energy production uh, capacity is available. Close to 55% of energy in Turkey is from clean energy parts without releasing carbon. This is how we generate our electricity. So this is a good set of data. And most European countries don't have this percentage. And also, we continue to pollute the world. We release uh, carbon, we release car, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, and uh, there's uh, 564 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. And 564 units have polluted the world. Uh, we have polluted the world by in 2021. It, we were at 220 in 1990. So we have uh, multiplied our 1990 figures with 2.5. Some European countries started to go below the European uh, 1990 level. So we have a bad record there. And how about afterwards? By 2030, we are going to go to 680 tons, and we are going to see peak level. Perhaps we are going to go up to 800 million tons. So we will quadruple the number uh, the 1990 figures in 2035, and then by 2050, we're going to bring it to, down to zero. So looking at it, it's really difficult what we have to do, because when we look at the past, we did great things with these projects and supports, and we have improved, uh, you know, we have wind and solar and uh, commissioned, and we try to use geothermal and the hydroelectricity plants capacities will increase, but what we need to do has to be much more than what we did. We need to change the name of the game because if we fail to do that, because you know our consumption habits, you know the consumption habits at home, the vehicles, the transportation, whatnot. So all of these, there are many factors that change the rules of the game. So we need to get our lessons, you know, as individuals, associations, as the institutions, as the ministries. So we need to make moves that change the rules of the game. So if you ask what these are <laughs> this is a separate uh, sessions topic and uh, we shouldn't uh, relax and re be relieved, and we shouldn't just rest. We should do more afterwards, because then there's, we, it won't be easy for us to reach the net zero targets by 2053, because it was, to, you know, 2053 is closer to us. Uh, but, you know, one day you will wake up, and then you will 
because you know uh, two months later you have 2024 so 2053 will come past and we need to act fast Mr. Alper, you are one of the oldest in the industry and NGO hat, but uh, they all deserve another session, but then you would miss your plane, so thank you for summarizing it. Mr. Pati, the same question is uh, now to you. What should we do better? What should we do different so that we can use these opportunities better? We need to be ready. That's number one. Number two, you need to become a brand. And as Astro, we prioritize this topic again this year. So it's not in the, the world, in Turkey, but throughout the world, we need to be well known. The SME support is very useful. And the brands, uh, we need to release them to the world. Uh, the topics that are discussed, the state and the top, uh, the public, we, the buttons, you need to fasten them properly in the beginning so they w mustn't be scooped. So, which means producers like us, generators like us, need to start well from the beginning. If we can uh, control and drain the technology how by how much we can control it by how much we can make it domestic will determine that uh, how in the front rows we will be because for instance electricity generation and electricity demand increases and it will continue to increase from our production from a production standpoint we don't see any problems but more technological and more added value products are necessary. For instance, uh, let's say in the case, if there's a standard transformer, our profit margin is lower. But when it becomes a specific transformer, our profit margin and the added value we bring to the country is much higher. So both with our state as well as the research and development activities, we must be ready for the new times and our preparations. All consumers must be ready for this. So hopefully, uh, when we see these developments in the industry, you know, they all touch us in one way or another. The electricity machines or systems that we use, we used to buy them from overseas in the past, but now we are trying to source them locally. But, uh, but you can do it only if the other party is ready. So as long as we are ready, subsequently, uh, a very good potential awaits our country, both in terms of investment and manufacturing and generation. This is my personal view. We always keep talking about the value per ton of exports for our country to elevate it. You know, Turkey's average is at a certain point, the wind industry is at a certain point, and you want to elevate it. And thank you for your summary. Mr. Ahmed, back to you. For two days now, we keep receiving messages about the high-level participation of the public sector and the messages that they give. They uh, take this very seriously. They attach importance. And would you like to talk about the incentives and supports? Yes, thank you very much. The, the, this is the website that he's sharing. The public industry, uh, the public sector has many incentives and supports without, uh, regardless of the industry. And I want to, I describe it in two ways. One is via calls from time to time, the public institutions make a call, invite, they make an announcement to companies and SMEs, and also when you make an investment, and we call this 724, round the clock, the state always has supports for the investors. And uh, the entrepreneurs and the SMEs uh, may not always hear about or access to these supports at the same level. So all the supports of the state are presented in one platform. This is Yatırıma Destek, which means support for investment.gov.tr. There is one issue that I forgot to tell in the beginning. As part of the development agencies, 
this, we've got investment support offices that are active in 81 provinces. Our duty is exp to explain to the investor all the state supports, the licensing and the permits uh, are facilitated by these offices, and all the investment processes monitored, they allocate places, suitable investment areas, and they guide the investors. So, so it is our mission and duty to explain the state supports, and not only our own equities of the development agencies, but also we inform them about other state supports. So this platform offers access to all the state supports. I can talk about this for three hours, four hours, while it looks like a simple page. It's uh, very active, it's, uh, it's very specific, and I recommend you do try and use it. There is developed search and advanced search. You can uh, get all the ads and announcements of the public institutions about wind, about industries. There's a clustering call that by the Ministry of Industry and Technology. Uh, this uh, call is actively there, and there are over 250 calls for support. Uh, you know, these are the supports that the state is giving. And there is also the 724 state. Uh, there are supports given as part of a state uh, regulation. Whenever this is. These are not topics that an entrepreneur can understand easily because the legislation is volume stick. Whenever you need a consultant, there's an incentive robot, incentive wizard. So you answer three questions and uh, wherever, when, when, where do you want to invest? In what province do you want to invest? And is it in an organized industrial zone or not? So we ask all these three questions, and then we all the incentives that the investor can benefit from are populated on the page. And if they have an idea about their fixed investment amount, what is the interest they have in mind, how many people they will em employ, the machinery and equipment, how much is imported, how much are local. So a simulation is made to show you know, what incentive will provide what kind of savings for the investor? These are the protectants and the guardians. The offices are the guardians of the investors. And in the Q&A part, when you ask us questions, there's an FAQ section. When you send us a question, you receive it in 24 hours. We invite them to our offices. We call them over the phone, try to get, uh, try to understand their questions, to hold meetings if possible. And then we publish it in the section so that the other investors can benefit from that. There are international companies, international consultancy companies. Even those questions are answered. And the platform serves uh, in English language as well. So we're trying to help uh, both local and international investors. And there are investment opportunities. Also, it includes this industry as well, as I explained in the second round. There are feasibility studies, and the ideas that we deem as investment opportunities are presented to the investor as preliminary feasibilities. We can say this sector is competitive in this area, and at an international and national level, the individual are, these are the companies, these are the uh, individuals that they compete against, and these are the state supports. So we summarize it to them. Another issue, sector related, there's a feature that is functional for the last six months only. The local supply chain application. Uh, and we. this is what we do. Let's say there are big anchors, buyers and SMEs. We're trying to bring them together. Let's say there's a big enterprise or an establishment that uh, if they want to buy the local equivalent of a product that they import, we announce it to all the SMEs here. And with the desired specs and the desired standards, we find the SMEs that produce them. So we match the two parties. We bring them together to help them cooperate and collaborate. Uh, this is just based on observations right now. but. This is going to be want to motivate this with the financial instruments, you know, the SMEs and the major procurement 
entities. Uh, we uh, signed a new uh, agreement with the uh, EBRD and the European Union. It was 187 million euro project, which will be used for automotive white goods and wind energy. So these are, uh, we intend to use this loan there. So to ensure fast access of SMEs to financing, normally, uh, uh, they receive their payments with 80 to 90 day terms, but we want to make it same day, but only for the, we want to finance the major establishments only, but we want to ensure fast access to financing, and we are going to internationalize the SMEs through this application, and soon we intend to share this with the industry. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, this was an, incentive GPT platform to explain the incentive system. Thank you very much. Yes, Ms. Burju, last word. About the Green Deal, what type of risks and what type of opportunities the industry should await? First of all, for 2030, there is a greenhouse gas restriction and 2050 net zero carbon, carbon neutral. And Turkey is 2053 carbon neutral or carbon net zero goals. So there, is, there are no technologies which can give you this. So you have to make a... So you can have some uh, recoveries or remedies to find, or you have to wait for new technologies. But the only thing, the only tool we are having we, uh, that exists, that is, is in existence right now, is re renewable energies. So this is a facilitating sector. So to make use of these incentives, you need th and to have a zero carbon emission of the reaching of these goals and the research and development. The market has a large area where you can expand. And also in countries where there is no cap on carbon, and they can be, they can find interest in wind energy because they want to prepare themselves. And there are also risks. One, you have to calculate the carbon. And what the, what is the the what are the emissions of the supply chains? How to calculate what type of measurement has been used? And all of this data has to be the same quality. This has to be reported in, inside the EU. And starting with 2026, this, this, the payments will start. And there are some hidden risks. And the EU. <coughs> has been blamed with uh, the under undermining the fair uh, competitiveness. So these are some of the risks I want to mention here. We started late, so we st but we tried to gain some time, but that's why we went fast. But I hope we are lying good in time, and I hope this all of this information has broadened also your horizons. We talked about opportunities and how we can make use of this. And I hope when we meet five years from now, we, will, we are going to talk about how much we enlarged our, this ecosystem. We have a new harbor. We have offshore parks. And then we will discuss how we can put the, carry this forward. So thank you so much for this wonderful information you gave us. And thank you for your patience.
in the parliament. Yeah, mm -hmm. I will give that to the I would like to read the uh, of the American because I am also looking for this mistake. Ah, really? <laughs>